everybody so today I wanted to show you how I've made this gift box for these Ferrero Rochers so I'm trying to get ahead of the Christmas kind of gifts this year and I picked these up in the pound shop they were two pound because in our pound shop they have things that are slightly above a pound but for eight Ferrero Rochers that's really good now the box that they come in is just like this so basically you can trace around this original box or I've come up with measurements which are pretty much the same but I just think it's a nice size box without the Ferrero Rocher so if you know wherever you are you don't have these eight this is still a great size gift box and you don't have to put the window in but I'm going to show you how I kind of just lined it up and um, use this really as a template but it just turns I mean this is nice on its own you can wrap it with paper pop it in a gift bag you know it's, it's good but I'm a paper crafter I like to use my supplies and create something really special so I think now for two pound I'm going to make a nice gift bag for this nearer the time I think that's just turned into a really beautiful gift so it's very straightforward to make and let me show you how so using this as my guide I've just taken it apart and you can see how it looks there and I've worked out you're going to need a piece of 10 and a quarter by 10 and a quarter cardstock okay and then if you know if you didn't want to do the scoring and you have this box you would just lay it down you can see my is a little bit shorter because I'm not having it open at both ends but you would literally now trace around this mark where the score lines are and score it and put it together just as this was put together so it's very easy but for those of you like I said that don't have or can't get hold of that box I'm now going to show you how to make this gift box so you want a piece of ten and a quarter by ten and a quarter and along one side you're going to score at one and three eighths eight and a quarter and nine and five eighths then you're going to rotate and you're going to score at half an inch four inches, five and three eighths, and eight and seven eighths. Okay, and all those measurements will be on my blog. So that's all the scoring done. Now this is too big to put through my die machine, so I'm gonna do a little bit of cutting. Now this is only if you want to do the aperture. If you don't want to have that acetate window, then you don't need to do this piece. But basically what you will have, if I hold it up like this, there we go. So you, you want it so that you have the one and three eighths score line here and then I think that was the eight and a quarter and then you've got that other score line there and then that half inch or slightly bigger than half inch piece. It's along that way that you want it and you want to have the other half inch piece here along the bottom because what we're going to do is we're going to cut the aperture. This is a side piece here you can see then you've got this large area and then another side piece this is where we want to cut the aperture but we want it to overlap into this side piece because you'll see there it folds around the sides of the box okay so I've got one of these rectangle dies this is from the card making magic rectangles it's the kind of go-to you will be see me using this one here and I've used it's the one two three four five the six and seventh sizes from the center the seventh size and I'll give you the measurements for that so you've got something similar now I'm drawing around it so I'm going to actually not measure it from the score line from the cut line but actually the whole thing so you're looking at just over three and a quarter by five and five eighths so I'm going to lay this it's probably going to make a lot more sense once I fold all of this and I've cut this. You'll really better see it because obviously I'm using white, so it's probably not the best one for filming, but I do love that white and gold together. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of tape. I'm just holding this in place while I draw around this. So I'm, like I said, I'm not die cutting it. Now, I've got it overlapping into this bit here. How far down you have it is entirely up to you. I've gone about halfway okay because there's a cut line just there you can see it's about halfway maybe a little bit further but I'm going to just stick with that halfway kind of look and then I'm just making sure it's straight with that score line and then I've got an even side here so I'm just going to tack that in place and then I'm just going to grab my pencil and I'm going to draw around the inside actually I just need to stick that on the outside because you're drawing around the inside and then I'm just going to carefully remove that and now using my ruler and my cutting knife 
I'm going to cut that out. Okay, and now that falls away perfectly. So now to make more sense of it all, I'm going to fold and burnish all of the score lines. Okay, so now this should hopefully make a bit more sense. So you can see how the box is going to come together and where I've done that opening. So you've got that side there, which is on the back, and it's going to stick to this tab here. And then it comes around here. The side here where we've got that tab, that's going to be the opening of the box. And on this end, there is nothing else apart from the side because that's all going to be closed. And then you, underneath you've got the base with that piece. That's why I said you want to make sure that half inch is on the bottom and this half inch, I know it's slightly bigger than half inch, I'm just saying half inch because that's what I usually do, but you've got one on the right hand side, one on the bottom, and then it's that large section and the side that you want to cut your window into. Okay, so hopefully that all makes sense. Next you want to cut a frame, so with that original one that you drew around the inside, you want to get the next size down, you want to stick these together, and then I'm going to die cut them in some gold, so I'm just going to pop a bit of tape there. You want to make sure you've got a nice border. So we'll even on all the sides there. So when I now cut that through the gold card, I'm going to get a nice frame. Okay, so once that comes out, there we go, we've got that frame. Now because I drew around the inside of that die, when I pop this over the top, I'll be able to stick it around the frame and it will also conceal my cut line. Okay. Before I do that, I want to add my acetate. So I've got lots of scrap pieces in here, so I'm going to find, there we go, that will work well. So I'm just going to flip it over, and you just want to give yourself, I'm going to give myself about a half inch overhang, just so I've got plenty of room there to apply my double sided tape. So just give yourself, you know, enough overhang just going to trim that down so I'll give you it's about just it's about six and a quarter by three and seven eighths so you could do six and a quarter by four would be fine so give it a good wipe in a moment and then I'm just going to grab my thicker red tape there and I'm just going to run it around the four sides. Okay, so now we're going to stick that over there. And then I'm just going to cover that whole area. And just grab your bone folder or something to push down on the tape. You want to make sure that it goes darker. And that means all the air bubbles have come out. You're not going to see any of this, so I'm not worried about what it looks like underneath here like so. Now with the score line that hits on the acetate just very carefully pinch that together and along that side there and then once you pinch them both you'll be able to just go along that acetate and then just burnish it. It's easier to do it that way than to get it into your scoreboard and you can just prise it apart and get the corner there of your box. Okay, so now we want to do a bit of cutting. I've got a mark there in my acetate, but I think mm, possibly my decoration might cover that, so I'm not too worried. So you've got that tab here on the bottom. So what you want to do is this little rectangle in the corner, you want to remove that one completely. Okay, and then take a little wedge off the corner. Come along to this one here, and you'll have this rectangle and then a smaller one. So just take away... Actually, you're going to end up taking all of this away. So there's that one there, like so. And then you also want to take away all of this, because this is going to be the base and the lid will tuck into this. So just cut up to that score line and then take all of that out, like so. And then we'll work along here now. So then you want to cut down past the first score line down to the second. And again, past the first score line down to the second. These two outer ones will fold in, but we want to remove the top section. So just remove that piece and that piece. 
and then again just take a piece off of each side. Now again you might want to take a little bit off the sides of this but I always say make sure it's a tiny tiny amount because you want the box to kind of wedge closed so it doesn't pop open so I've just taken a very small amount. So that's that end then we're going to flip it around now to this end or side and you just want to cut down now the rest of the score lines to the first one. So all this side is missing is that extra piece and then that one and then again with these pieces just take a wedge off like so and then this one and this one. Now when we go to close this this one we're going to fold in first, this piece here, so I'd recommend you cut a little bit off of the sides of that as well, just so everything closes in nicely. Okay, so if I just clear all this away, you will have something like that. Okay, so if you want a screenshot or just pause, that's what you want to aim for. Now we're going to start sticking it together, so first of all I'm just going to run some glue just along this tab here. And if you turn it over, fold this side in and then just fold that one over and it will perfectly line up. And then I just like to go that way as well. And these are good boxes to store flat, so if you don't want to stick this end first, you might just want to get to this stage, you can decorate it all but just not seal it. So if, and you might not have the room to have them already made up like this, so you can keep them flat packed until you need them. But now we've got the start of our box. So now this end, not the one with the tab, this empty, or this plain end here, I'm now going to bring in the Kalau glue and I'm going to add the glue to that piece where you would have cut the sides off, so that bigger piece, and then fold these in and then put some glue on the top of those. And then close that one. And if you turn it upside down, Fold those out and you grab a ruler, you can go in there, this is quite a good ruler because it's like a triangular shape and get it right into the corners. Just go in there and just spend a minute making sure that's all stuck down. Okay and now that side you can just close in the sides and then it will just close in like so and you want it to be tight so it locks in really nicely. You might want to put a little finger um, pull there as well. You could use the ones in my slider dies. So you could cut a little finger pull there if you want to make it easier for them to slide it out. But now we have the gift box. Really straightforward to do. So now I've got this one here. Because it's a very thin frame, I'm going to use my thin red tape here. Okay, now you just want to pop it around here. So get it as, you know, further down here but as long as it's still covering because you want to make sure you're going to wrap it around the bottom part so that looks good to me and then take it there and then just pinch it around with your fingers like so I like frames I always do a frame I just think it finishes it really nicely Okay, so I'm happy with that. So now it's just down to the decoration. So I'm just going to show you how I've put them together. So I've got my little foam board here. Now I've already gone ahead and die cut all of these pieces here. And it's using the Ultimate Ponsettia die. Now this is from last year. It is still available. And it's one of, well it is, my favourite Ponsettia die. One, because it's so big. But you have the different sizes. So you can make smaller ones for smaller projects. But I did make a beautiful bouquet for my nan last year and she's still got it, she brings it out, well actually I think she keeps it out all year round but um, it's a great one, I said when I'd done it last year in the bouquet if you're visiting anybody in hospital, I know it's a bit difficult at the minute you know it's obviously different rules and depend on where you are in the world but something like this would be really nice to give so um, it's a wonderful set and I think this is the first time I've actually done them in white and I thought they looked really really nice so I've gone ahead and die cut two of the I'm going to say the small, the medium size, sorry, because you've got a large, a large, medium, and then small. So I've done two of the medium, and then I've done three of the small. And then I've cut the smaller of the sprigs, I've done three of them, and then I've cut four of these because I've put two in each flower. And 
with these I've just shaped them in my finger like so just rolling them just to bring them to life make them you know more dimensional like so you can distress them you can do all that kind of stuff I did um, I do do that in that other video it's quite detailed actually and um, I've used them in a few other um, videos as well so if I've got a playlist I'll link it but I will link the um, the bouquet or the basket of poncettias because it's beautiful so again just kind of shape those just put a little bit of shape into those as well and then with these little ones I just use my mat here I just made this myself it's just some um, it was an old board from something but just with a little ball tool just push in the centers there just to give it a bit of shape and now I've got my hot glue gun on now with these you see you get like a longer one here and here just flip it so the longer one's facing away and they will perfectly sit and you won't get any gaps so I'm just going to pop a bit of glue in there and then that will sit and perfectly cover that one and then I've got one of the small ones it's just really to fill it up a little bit more like so and then again this works the same way you've got a slightly longer one so it will be like so you can see it covers the middle there and then as it's just kind of drying if you just push it down as that glue hardens it will help to give that flower more dimension so even that one there I could probably go in and still shape that a little bit while it's still warm but you look how now dimensional that is okay and then with these here I just again pop some a little bit of glue you don't have to use the hot glue it's just quicker for me I'm just kind of offsetting them so you get to see all of the sides and again push that down and let that glue dry and then again a little bit of glue and that one is going to go in the centre of that one. So now we can start building this so I'm going to grab these and pop them in here just because it will then give me a bit more of a solid box to work on. Make sure it's the right way throw a rocher is the right way up, there we go so I'm going to stick this one, obviously if you are using acetate just be careful with your hot glue but that's all going on to the cardstock anyway this one goes on to it a little bit but I always kind of just cool it for a few seconds and then stick it in and then with these going to pop some glue on there and we're going to feed this one under the here and get your pokey tool you can use that to stick it down so you don't have to worry about burning your fingers this one I took a chunk off because I wanted it a bit smaller and that one goes in here again I can see I'm just clipping it onto the frame there and then again this one I'm going to keep it the same length and this is going onto the cardstock, all hidden, like so. And then for the sentiments, I did show these in a recent What Did I Get? And I thought, oh, I'll use them. But I just thought they were a little bit lost against this, so I keep them for another project and I didn't want them on the white. But you also got the red there, you can do the red poncettias because the red and gold will go nice. But I'm using these, which I got last year by Simply Creative. Actually, these ones, I did get them originally by Trimcraft, who are part, who do, who make Simply Creative. But then I got them again from Every Crafts a Pound. So I did pick these up really cheap because I loved them so much last year. And they also do silver as well, which is Happy Christmas. But again, I'm sticking with that gold just to make sure it sticks. I'm going to pop a little bit of hot glue there. And this one's going to sit just there and then to fill the centers I'm not squeezing the glue out I'm just using the bead of glue that's on the end of the 
actual glue gun there and I'm just going to sit that in the centre like so if I bring that up can you see now all that detail but it still needs a little bit more bling for me so I'm just bringing in the Spectrum Noir sparkle pen and literally just cover all of the leaves Okay, so now can you see all that glitter? They look gorgeous. That one's still a bit wet. If I bring in this one, which is dry, you should see the sparkle even more. There we go. So there are the finished boxes. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today. I'll try and share the links to things like this, but I'm not sure if they're still available. And I know that the frames have sold out, but I'll link the Ponsettias because I think they're really nice. And just yeah, check out your pound shop if you're in the UK and see if you can grab these eight for two pounds. I think that's really good. And uh, yeah, these are going to go in my cupboard now with my kind of the start of my Christmas presents. And um, these are just nice little fillers and stocking fillers and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, I'm going to go. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back again very soon. Bye.